So what is IT Ops? You don't know by now? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Wine About Cybercrime. I'm Rick Gonzalez from the IT Ops COE, and I have about 30 years in the industry providing IT solutions to the federal government. And with me today is my partner in crime, Jeff Irwin. Hi, I'm Jeff Irwin. I'm with ECS, and I'm a co-lead of the IT Ops with uh, COE with Rick. Cheers. You probably noticed that we're not drinking wine. In IT Ops, we have to drink something a little bit stronger. Right, Jeff? <laughs> yes, our days are fun. <laughs> so this is the bourbon edition. Today, I'm happy to show that we have Angel's Envy, which is one of my favorite bourbons. And there are five rules for a bourbon. Bourbon can only be made in the United States of America. It also has to be made in brand new charred oak barrels. And it has to be 51% corn mash, and it can't be more than 125 proof before it's poured into the barrel. And lastly, only water can be added to it in order to make sure that it stays underneath 125% proof. Cheers again, Rick. Cheers. So what are we whining about today? Today, we're whining about cybercrime and its impact on IT operations. You wouldn't believe that how many times a cyber event actually impacts the IT operations delivery of services. We're constantly making changes to the system. We're constantly trying to protect the systems while people are using them. So it's like changing an airplane's wings on while you're flying. Well, IT operations is a big synergistic move between the services that are being delivered and those processes and practices that are within IT operations and the tools. You saying I'm a tool? <laughs> no. I've been called a tool tools expert. But I've been called a tool by, by a lot better people than you, I hate to say. It's those tools that actually help prevent a lot of the bad things that happen within an IT environment. But because of the attacks, there are numerous patches and updates and changes, and that's the frustration. But there are ways to alleviate that. There is a rapidly changing landscape of internal and external attacks, and, and it's usually causing the IT operations folks to be reactionary in nature. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's constant software updates. Every time they change Microsoft Office, boy, do we hear some complaints. <laughs> Whether it's good or bad, right, it's a change. We have to update things. We have to patch them. We have to make those changes transparently to the users while at the same time trying to keep them uh, avoiding their disruption for their business. Because, you know, ultimately, we're all here to make sure that people can still do their jobs every day. And I like the way you said that, whether they, they're, they're, re, they're patches to, to prevent a cybercrime or sometimes they're even changes that are recommendations for improvement. Mm -hmm. All of that has an impact on IT operations. Improvement is not what our users <laughs> always call it. That's what we call them when the users complain, say, where'd my button go? <laughs> exactly. You know, we're like a utility company. If we're running along and everything's smooth, nobody really notices us. But when something goes wrong, that's when everybody knows it. And we drink. I need more. <laughs> yeah. In truth, the attacks are only getting better or stronger every day because there are clever people out there trying to fight the systems that we're trying to put, put up and prevent. What we need to do is to work on putting those tools and tweaking them in such a way that they provide us a leading indicator rather than a lagging indicator. And that's where tools like ECS's Pathfinder help us identify the problems that are in the world and which ones are the leading indicators of problems that can cause a breach or an issue with data integrity. Or a partnership with ServiceNow that allows us to put in ITOM that we can tweak those tools and those integration points to identify when things are gonna happen before they happen. Part of the balance, though, is to make sure that the workforce isn't frustrated, right? We have to make sure that they can do their jobs, they're not frustrated, because that impacts productivity. And, you know. How do you do that? Well, actually, that's your expertise. I'm a tool. <laughs> how do we do that? How, how do we let them know? Well, 
communication, Rick. I mean, that's the key to making sure that our users understand what's going on. We need to test, evaluate, understand the change that we're about to make so we can effectively communicate it to their customers. I think you're absolutely right. It's that communication. That's a first. It's that. <laughs> that is true. And to that, I'll drink. <laughs> that's probably the most critical component is communicating out that the change is coming, what that right. change is going to do, yep. what, it's, what effect it's going to have and when it's going to take place. Yeah, and that's going to avoid frustration. That is the key thing, Rick, is to make sure they know. Everybody's expected to do more with less these days. So how do we help them? How do they help us? We all communicate. You know, Rick, we have to really balance productivity and security. We can't tighten things down so that people can't work. The most secure computer is the one that's not connected to anything, right? So we can't do that. We have to make sure people are productive. And we do that by managing the risk of connections and what the value is of connecting to the internet for your business. You can't afford to not connect to the internet today. I, I totally agree. I, I think it's, a, it's creating that balance, right? Mm -hmm. That balance of risk management that you talk about in order to be able to make sure that they are productive as possible, yet secure as we can get it. That's right. And communicating what those risks are so that your senior management can sign off on those, right? Accept those risks and understand them. That's a key part to keeping the work going. We want you to focus on your mission. We focus on the mission of keeping you operating. That's what we can do for you. And by doing that, we're able to, as a, as a COE, help the business unit scale up provide that consistent quality through SLAs, minimize costs, because we have the people within the COE or know where they're at within the company in the COE in order to provide that as a value service to them that's going to minimize any cost to the client. Yeah, and because we have coverage, because we have staff already, it's easier and cheaper for us to bring in extra people to solve a problem or prevent a problem than it is for you to go out and hire them yourselves. Including training. Training is expensive. And as a COE, we know where the trained people are. That's right. Minimize your costs on IT ops by outsourcing it to a team that's doing this at scale. And with that, we'd like to close this episode of Wine About Cybercrime, Bourbon Edition. If you want to meet the challenge and make a difference, visit ecstech.com and join our team. Because we're a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs>